everyone. Um, it's very scary to see my name on a screen that says Community Sports Champion. I can hardly read it. Um, six months ago, I wasn't involved in sport. I was two and a half stone heavier, um, had a lack of confidence, and that's where I'd like to begin my story today. Um, just to set the scene, I met um, Nigel from West Yorkshire Sports and Bruce from South Yorkshire Sports in a professional capacity. And you're both smiling at me now, so I better say something nice. My role for the charity that I represent is to increase participation of ethnic minority people either working in sports um, and participating in sports as well as quite a lot of, a lot of other underrepresented sectors. Um, so in a professional capacity, I can talk about that, we can talk about the strategy, we can talk about what needs to happen and applying to uh, um, Sport England to support that. So that's where the scene can be set. Um, over lunch, I mentioned a throwaway comment to Nigel saying that, um, yes, this is great, it's going to be a great project. I've got a real feeling that the ethnic minority community will um, be involved, more participation, help to make the 17,000 um, target that you all have. And I threw away a comment and said, well, um, I've never been involved in sport. I'm not a person that does sport and started to give an example and, and that's the, the journey that I'd like to tell you about today. Um, Ten years ago I was very good at netball, I was great goal defence, loved netball and unfortunately I uh, wasn't chosen for the one team in the academy, um, this is back in Northern Ireland. And I was disappointed but I got involved in the arts so at least I was involved in something so sports just wasn't for me. When I got to university in, in um, England, I thought, right, I'll give it a go. I'll um, try and make it for the netball team. I'm great goal defence. I didn't quite make it into my school team. And um, I was laughed at, you know, a um, bit of weight, eating the cheesy chips and a few beers in the first year. Um, and I, I took it with a smile and thought, yep, yeah, sport's not for me. But I, I really thought, and I've written a note here because it's very important that I, I say the reason why I wanted to be involved in netball. I love to compete. I love being part of a team. And most importantly, I love that training weekly. Um, and there just wasn't an opportunity for me to do that. So I, I forgot about that in my university years. Um, in my professional career, I, I realized that I didn't want to do step aerobics. I didn't want to do spinning. I wanted to be involved in netball. So. Um, I picked up the phone, or actually I googled to try to find out beginner's courses in netball. I knew that seven years had elapsed and um, probably wasn't as good at the goal defence as I used to be. Um, and it is a bit of a sob story because the, the receptionist on the other end of the phone said, no, we don't do beginner's classes in netball, pretty much laughed at me and the phone went down. A year later, in the gym, that I've been to twice in a year, um, a uh, very expensive gym membership, I think it was £150, so it was, what's that, £75 ago. Um, I mentioned to a girl that was getting changed, she was on the phone saying, oh yeah, yeah, I'll meet you at netball, and um, quite innocently I said to her, do, um, excuse me, where do you play netball, can I be involved? And she said, um, what leagues have you played in? And uh, I said, a beginner, do you know, like some beginner skills, I'm good goal defence. Um, and again, she's in the sporting fraternity, I put her on a pedestal and thought she might be able to advise me. But um, quite quickly and abruptly she said, I, I work for ASDA, if I'm allowed to say that. Um, we have a league, um, but you have, to have, you have to have been involved in the fraternity. And I thought, right, well this is my last go, I, I'm just not, I'm just not, netball's just not for me, it's impossible for me to ever get into netball, to be part of a team, to compete, I'm very competitive, I know I'm good. And um, these are throwaway comments that a lot of people like me, who really should be in that 17,000, really raring to go, um, very good goal defence, um, <laughs> but nobody just really gave me a chance. And I thought, that's just it, I'm, I'm meant to be arty and creative and a bit of a sense of humour and that will get me through. And something was definitely missing. And um, 
Nigel mentioned to me, it's the first person that listened to me and said that's wrong, that should never have happened. The receptionist should have maybe said something like, I'll take your number and I'll ask, or look on the website, or maybe, I, maybe it is my fault, but Nigel was the first person that listened to me and said, absolutely not, it shouldn't happen. Um, that gave me a bit of confidence being listened to. Um, around about the same time, I, um, uh, I was going to swear there, but I kind of thought, sod it. And um, <laughs> I went to another pair of very expensive, ghastly orange trainers at um, a little shop in West Park in Leeds. And um, first time I'd ever been on a treadmill with somebody who knew what they were doing. Uh, my running style was videotaped and played back to me, it was very embarrassing. Um, and another person listened to me, got me the right trainers, got me um, a very expensive mono boob um, sports bra. I can't believe I've said that to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, not, well, well, actually, when you're a bigger girl, it's quite embarrassing. You think that sport can't be done by people of my physique. So that's two people that actually listened to me. Um, someone from a large organisation, uh, um, a partnership that is trying to um, reach maybe 17,000 people. Some of them might be like me, really want to have a go. And the guy in the shop who got me these ugly trainers. Um, leaving the shop, I saw an advert for the Great North Run and thought, moment of madness, I've got these trainers, can't run, will run. So I went onto the website and logged on and booked myself for um, the Great North Run. So that was June, no, that was April 2007. Uh, and that gave me six months to train for 13.1 miles. Um, and I'll get to the point. Instead of just training for the Great North Run, I signed myself up for the Hydroactive Challenge in Liverpool. And I also signed myself up for the most beautiful run in the Cairngorms in um, the Highlands of Scotland. And I know you're probably looking at me thinking, God, she's mad agent, never run in her life. Very good goal defence. <laughs> um, but I just thought if I'm going to do it, I need to set myself kind of stages and get through it. And um, with the support of people, um, just one word of support from Nigel, I'm working with Bruce as well, and the guy in the shop. And, the more people that I start to talk to you about running, you get to talk about, um, do you hold a handheld bottle? Or, um, I, I started to feel part of a group. I started to belong. Um, I started to run with friends who were a lot better than me, so I was always chasing them. Um, I became part of a fraternity. I started to talk about times. I started to talk about perspiration, um, chafing, things like that. And um, I started to train weekly and I started to become competitive. So the three things that I thought that only netball could give me, my only exposure to sports that I felt that I was good at, um, I've ended up that I've got this to show you. And I, I, I don't know if you'll be impressed or not, but it's, it's like an Olympic medal to me, and I know you'll see the real thing later on, but this is um, the only piece of anything that I've ever had in my entire, entire life that says you've done it, you've trained for it, and you've done it. And um, it's, it's just being listened to. It's it, the challenge that I, I suppose that I'm, the reason that I'm here speaking to you is as people that meet people every day, just if somebody says, well, I never was involved, it just takes one word of, I can, I can hear what you're saying. And sometimes just being heard gives people, it doesn't need big fancy buildings, or sometimes it doesn't need um, a sports initiative, it just is nice to be listened to and a bit of advice. Um, and I'd just really like to um, thank Nigel for inviting me to speak today and thanks a million for listening to me. And I'm so chuffed to see those two captions together. Thank you very much.